Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today I'm continuing the study of the book of Acts, and I'm going to start today with Acts chapter 24, verse 1. If you have not seen the previous studies on Acts, I urge you, please watch this series from the very beginning. Uh, the book of Acts is so important. Uh, if we understand the book of Acts correctly, it, it helps us to understand everything else uh, in the New Testament. So let me begin now. Uh, Acts chapter 24, verse 1. This is uh, taking place roughly, uh, it's getting pretty close to 60 A.D. now. It's probably about 57, 58 A.D. Uh, it, it's about uh, probably like 25 years or more after uh, Pentecost. So, I'll read this first in the KJV. And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always, and in all places, most noble Felix, with all frankness. So, Turtleus is a kind of a prosecutor here to tell uh, Governor Felix uh, why the, the Jewish people, uh, the authorities, want to kill Paul and what this big uh, out find yourself raged by him, uh, and it seemed like the first tactic that Turtleus is using with Felix is flattery. It's very common, we see, we've seen it many times throughout the scriptures where the Jewish leaders uh, are attempt to flatter, flatter the, uh, the Roman authorities. Uh, I, I don't think the Roman authorities are that naive and gullible to be uh, swayed by their flattery, but that's what they're doing. Um, I'll read these first three verses in the Amplified. Five, this, so this is, in the Amplified has titles for chapters and, and uh, subtitles throughout the chapters. And the title for this chapter is Paul before Felix. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down from Jerusalem to Caesarea with some elders and an attorney named Tertullus, uh, acting as spokesman and counsel. They presented to the governor their formal charges against Paul. After Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began the complaint against him, saying to the governor, Since through you we have attained great peace, and since by your foresight reforms are being carried out for this nation, in every way and in every place, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with all, uh, with all gratitude. I think it's even easier to see the, the attempt at uh, flattery uh, to gain uh, favor with, uh, with the governor. Uh, now back to KJV verse 4. Uh, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Well, this word sedition, you know, that's a... Uh, that's a, a, a crime where the when you say someone is uh, guilty of sedition, that means that they are actually plotting against the government. And uh, so this is a false charge. That Paul is not uh, plotting against the Roman government. Uh, what he's done is proclaim the gospel 
the good news that salvation is offered to everyone by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that uh, Jesus died for our sins, salvation is offered to everyone as a free gift, Jesus has risen uh, from the tomb bodily as, a, as proof that he is our God and Savior. And this is what Paul is proclaiming, and he's also saying that um, Judaism, the time for Judaism has passed, we must uh, leave that behind and put our faith entirely in Jesus, no longer believe that religion, the practicing of a religion uh, plays a part in your salvation. So that's what Paul is actually doing, but this uh, Tertullus is uh, charging Paul with sedition. Um, verse 6, Who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. Um, well, he hasn't profaned the temple. Uh, he's, he is uh, proclaiming as, uh, but see, I, I believe Paul uh, wrote Romans through Philemon, these epistles. But I also believe that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. Um, because it's such a, um, a, a, a kind of a, a step by step, block by block um, building of a case uh, that uh, practicing of animal sacrifices must be done away with because the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross is not only sufficient but it's final and no other sacrifices are, should be done uh, for sins. And so the way that uh, the arguments that are made in, in the book of Hebrews are certainly Pauline, but they're also, uh, it's written in such a way that it's just a, a really, um, uh, as I said, it's kind of brick by brick building the case very systematically. And so I, I see that as the way that Paul would present the argument, but uh, it's a kind of a, to me, Hebrews and Galatians are companion books that should be uh, understood together. Um, but uh, the what he's saying about the temple, this charges that he's profaning the temple. He, no, he, Paul is teaching that animal sacrifices and temple temple worshiping at the temple and doing animal sacrifices should not be done if you're a Christian. Um, so, uh, verse 7, But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands. So, Tertullus is explaining to Festus what happened in Jerusalem, where Paul was in the temple. Uh, they were outraged against Paul. They were probably going to rip him apart, as it says in the scriptures, and, and, and kill him except he is rescued by the Roman authorities, uh, Lysidius, Lysias uh, being the, the chief captain there. He took Paul out of that mob and, um, and now brought him to, because he's a Roman citizen, he had uh, legal rights as a citizen, and so he brought him to the governor uh, so this matter could be discussed and settled. Um, but. So uh, Turtle is, is uh, explaining to um, Felix, this, giving this account of what happened. Verse 8, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, that was um, uh, Lysias uh, commanding the Jewish authorities to come to the, the Roman governor, Felix, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been, so this is Paul speaking now, for as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, 
I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. So Paul is also using this tactic of flattery. Uh, he's going to, um, see, if you've ever done any sales in your life, if you know anything about salesmanship, then before you sell your product, or your service, before you present your argument to uh, get someone, to win someone over, uh, the first thing you're you're told to do is sell yourself and and uh, make friends with with uh, the person you're discussing make them like you <clears throat> so that's what Turtles is attempting and Paul is not going to uh, neglect that he wants uh, Festus to like him he's flattering him uh, I don't doubt at all that Paul is uh, sincere though in what he's saying to Festus um, Verse 12, And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the, the thing whereof they now accuse me. So Paul is saying these accusations that uh, Turtles is making is, are, are false accusations. He hasn't, he's not guilty of any of these things. <clears throat> Verse 14, But this I confess unto thee, so he's saying, I'm not guilty of these charges, but this is uh, what I'm willing to confess, and this is the truth uh, that you need to know, that after the way, the way is, uh, is the, uh, uh, the original uh, term used to uh, describe uh, or to define a, a believer in Jesus. And later in, in Antioch, it's, uh, the scriptures tell us that at a certain time in Antioch, the term the name Christian was adopted to identify someone who believed in Jesus for their salvation. Uh, but before that, the common term was the way, uh, because Jesus says, I am the way. Uh, he's the way to be saved. You put your faith in him, and that's how you're assured your place in heaven. So he's when he says, um, Uh, that after the way which they call heresy, so the Jewish people are saying that those who believe in Jesus are, those, are identified as the people who believe in the way, uh, they say it's heresy. But Paul says, so worship I the God of my fathers. So Paul is worshiping the, the, the same God, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses worship. Believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He, believe, he believes the Old Testament. <coughs> the books of the Old Testament are, are referred to by Jesus and here again by Paul as the law and the prophets. I think it's the first five books that are considered the law and after that the, the, the rest of them are referred to as, as the prophets. <coughs> Verse 15, and, and, and have hope toward God which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead. So they're all in agreement, uh, the Jewish people and Paul, uh, except for the sect of the Jew Jews called Sadducees, who do not believe in the resurrection and various other things. <clears throat> this, was, uh, th this was discussed in an earlier chapter. As a matter of fact, in the, when Paul was... Uh, uh, about to be killed and torn apart at the synagogue, uh, Paul had uh, uh, realized that there were Pharisees and Sadducees at, at this uh, place, and he used this disagreement that they have over, over resurrection uh, as a means of causing a division and, and uh, distracting them from attacking him. So now he's saying that, well, we're in agreement that uh, uh, there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Um, we, those of us who believe in uh, biblical Christianity, uh, we, we believe that uh, there is a promise of a, a bodily resurrection of all humanity. Uh, everyone who's ever lived will, uh, at a moment in time, and I believe it it's probably will be fairly soon, maybe within uh, weeks, months, or years, if not the next few decades, I expect there will be a resurrection. 
Jesus will come and uh, there will be a resurrection that the, uh, the, the just, just means that you're, you're justified. God says, um, if there was a judgment and you had to present your case to, to God and say, this is why you should let me into heaven, and you are presenting your case saying, let me in because Jesus is my savior. Uh, if, if you're trying to justify your salvation based on that, then uh, you you do have your place in heaven. You do have the promise of eternal life in, in the new heavens and the new earth. And you're, 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 case, uh, you're justified um, because of your faith in Jesus. But if you were at that judgment and you tried to argue to God, let me into heaven because I'm a good person, because I'm religious, because I follow the golden rule, or because I believe in Jesus and I got circumcised and followed the law, the laws of Moses and, and got water baptized. If you are putting your faith in Jesus in, in addition to other things, then uh, the scriptures tell us that you're, uh, you've nullified the grace of God and, and, and uh, uh, it's of no effect. It, it, does, it cannot save you. If your faith is divided between Jesus and some kind of uh, uh, religious requirements, but uh, the just in this case here are those people who are truly justified because of their their belief in salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The unjust here are everyone else, all the people throughout history who have never put their faith in, in, in God for their salvation, and then at a point in time when uh, it was revealed that this Savior God is Jesus, he, and he, he did uh, become a man and died for our sins, was raised from the dead, and we understand that's who our Savior is. Uh, if people have never believed correctly in that way and put their faith in the Savior, then they're not justified. They are referred to as the unjust. Um, so, but regardless of whether you're saved or not saved, whether you're justified or not justified, um, we're all going to be resurrected. Just as Jesus was raised from the tomb bodily, all of us, every person who's ever lived, will have a bodily resurrection and then go before God at the judgment. Those of us who put our faith in Jesus will go before Jesus at what's called the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. We're not there to be judged for our salvation. We're before Christ because we're His. We're already saved and that's settled. We're before Christ now to get judged for our works to see after you got saved, what kind of works did you do for the, for the cause of Jesus? And uh, in, in that case, you will receive rewards for the good things you did. But those who did never put their faith in Jesus, they will also have a bodily resurrection and go to before God to be judged. But that judgment is called the great white throne judgment, and they're there to be judged for their salvation. And uh, they're there because they're lacking. They're lacking salvation. They never put their faith in Jesus, otherwise they would be at the judgment seat of Christ instead. And so at this great white throne judgment, basically they're... The books are opened, everything in their life is revealed, and they're basically God will say to them, look, look at all the things you did in your life, how imperfect you were. Here's a record of it all. Jesus died for all your sins, but you would never put your faith in him, so it's, it's of no effect to you. And um, you, you will die and suffer the second death in the lake of fire. Um, so that's what it means here when Paul talks about that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Verse 16, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void to offense toward God and toward men. Uh, Paul's exercising, so he's, he's making an attempt. He said, I always try to attempt to uh, have a good conscience, so I'm, I don't want, to, don't want to do anything that offends God or offends my fellow man. Verse 17, Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. 
So he's been away many years from Jerusalem on these three missionary journeys, doing his uh, evangelism, church planting, uh, and uh, kind of a, a traveling evangelist. Uh, and he says, now I've come back to my nation, back to Jerusalem, to give alms and to visit his, his uh, home country in Jerusalem. Um, verse 18, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. So certain Jews saw him in the temple. There was no issue at that time. Uh, there was no... Uh, uh, riot going on at that time. Everything was peaceful. Uh, verse 19, who ought to have been here before thee and object if they had ought against me. So he said, the people who actually came against me in the temple, why aren't they here to give you an account of, 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 what, of what happened? Uh, verse 20, or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council. Uh, the council is the, the council in Jerusalem of the, uh, the leaders of the, uh, the, the Jewish uh, leadership in Jerusalem is called the council. Um, it, verse 21, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead. So Paul says, I, while I was before them, I discussed this resurrection of the dead, and then there were, uh, a, a riot broke out. The, these two factions, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, got in this big argument because they don't agree on the, the resurrection, and I'm caught up in the middle of that. And, and it says, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. Verse 22, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, uh, so Felix, uh, knowledge of that way, the way again, is reference to um, uh, the uh, belief in Jesus is the way for salvation. And Felix is, is saying here that he had a perfect knowledge of the way. In other words, Felix was familiar with uh, with Paul's teachings and the, and the, the, the belief system of uh, Christianity. Um, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. So Felix is saying, Okay, I'm going to have the chief captain Lysias come, and I want to hear what he has to say about this. Verse 23, And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty. So he's under arrest, and he's being detained, I'd say, but he's free to move about. So he's not like put in a cell. He's not treated as a guilty p party at this time, but um, he's not free to go, free to leave. He's, you know, Felix is going to hear this out and make a decision. And right now he hasn't made the decision yet, so Paul is being detained. Uh, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or come unto him. So Felix is allowing Paul's companions, is probably, um, in this case, it's probably Luke, who's the writer of the book of Acts, who's his Paul's physician and companion, and the historian that's given us this book of Acts. Uh, Luke, I imagine, is one of them, uh, one of these uh, acquaintances, and um, possibly uh, uh, Silas. Paul started off in his... his uh, uh, ministry works with Barnabas, they had a falling out or, or argument over uh, John Mark, and then Silas became Paul's uh, kind of right-hand man and traveling companion and co-worker. So I imagine these, and when it says, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or come unto him, the acquaintances I'm guessing are probably Silas and, and Luke and some others, uh, verse 24, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So uh, Felix has his wife, and they call for Paul, and they want to hear about this faith in Christ. Verse 25, 
And as he reasoned for righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. As Paul, Paul is presenting the, uh, the, the message, the, the good news, uh, the message of self, the free gift of salvation. He's presenting all this to Felix, and his wife says Felix trembled. So he's really affected by Paul's uh, message. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Um, so he trembled. What is what's causing his trembling? Is his conscience perhaps being convicted, that, uh, that convinced that Paul, maybe what Paul's saying is true, and that he and now he's, he feels he's got to make a decision about Jesus for personal decision of his own. And, uh, so, but he he says, Paul, go thy way. When I have a community season, I will call for thee. So he, he'll call Paul to leave temporarily. He'll talk to him again later. Verse 26, he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul. So he's also hoping that if, Paul, if he stalls, that Paul or Paul's friends will come up with some money as a bribe so that... Uh, uh, because bribe, I guess, we're just in very common practice. That uh, hey, you flattered me. You presented your case. Now, if you really want me to be sure that I'll uh, rule in your favor, then give me a bribe. Uh, he hoped also that money should be, have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. Verse twenty-seven. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. <clears throat> well, that's the end of chapter uh, 24. Um, let me see the, the, the footnotes on this. Uh, verse 5 says, uh, it's referring to that word sedition. It says, inciting rebellion was a serious crime under Roman law. Uh, also, it says the Romans had forbidden the establishment of any new religion. Um, verse 6, it says early MS manuscripts do not contain the remainder of verse 6 and 7, nor the first part of verse 8, 6, 7, and 8. Let's go back to that. Uh, who also have gone about to profane the temple whom we took and w would have judged according to our law. Let me read verse 6, 7, and 8 in the... Hmm, that's interesting. On this page, it's blacked out on the uh, that portion. Uh, I don't know. That's not related to this for some reason. I don't know why. It's look, maybe a technical thing on the computer here. So 6, 7, and 8 in the Amplified says, He even tried to desecrate the temple, but we took him into custody, and we intended to judge him by our law. By Lysias, the commander came, and with great force took him out of our hands <clears throat> and ordered his accusers to come before you by interrogating him yourself concerning all these matters. You, and then that's blacked out. Um... Uh, then verse 14, there's a footnote, C92. Uh, uh, this is chapter 9, verse 2. Paul was probably referring to Jesus himself. Let me see verse 14, what it says. But I confess unto thee that after the way, which they call heresy, yeah, the way is Jesus, as I said. Jesus said, I am the way. Uh, Uh, Festus served about two years as governor. He was regarded as a fairly capable governor, superior to both his predecessor and his successor. All right, so uh, we'll pick this up. The next chapter, Portius Festus uh, arrives, and Felix, uh, it says, Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Hmm. All right, well, I'll pick up with uh, the next chapter. That's uh, chapter 25.
chapter 25 next time. I look forward to all your comments. Uh, again, I urge you all, uh, if you just came across this one video, I hope you will watch this entire series from the beginning. It's a playlist on my YouTube channel uh, titled The Book of Acts, a verse-by-verse verse verse commentary. Thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.